Hi everyone, it's Gigabeef here. Today we're going to be talking about armor, going through the mechanics of how it works and what to look out for on a budget. Tarkov works a bit differently to other games and we'll be going through some of the more commonly misunderstood mechanics along with some practical advice on what to choose. So stick around and let's get going. Okay, so armor in EFT can save your life, but the effectiveness of the armor has to be taken in context with the state of the current patch and wipe. This is because as the wipe progresses, more players are running higher tier rounds, and with our current wipe nearly 4 months in the making, this means that plenty of incoming player fire will blast through even the good armour. When I'm thinking about my loadouts, I'm either usually gearing up to protect against scavs only, or for fighting players depending on what the purpose or the goals of the raid are. But before we go into the specifics, let's first go through a quick overview of the mechanics, either as a refresher, or for those of you who are new to the game and haven't seen it before. I'll try to make it fast and understandable, so bear with me. Most of this information is available on the wiki, which I'll put a link to in the description, so feel free to go and check it out to learn more. It's pretty much all based on No Food After Midnight's research and testing, who is a legend in the Tarkov community for popularising these mechanics. In its most basic form, there are six tiers of armour that primarily determines its ability to prevent a round from penetrating and causing actual damage to your player. Every round in the game has a penetration value, which is compared to the armour level, which sets the potential penetration chance of a bullet. Then there is effectively a dice roll to decide if the round penetrates the armour or not, using the chance that was set in the last step. The penetration chance is affected by the durability of the armour, which uses the original maximum durability to compare this, regardless of whether it has been repaired or not. A fresh 60 out of 60 armour will stop more rounds than 30 out of 60, which is actually identical to 30 out of 30 as far as penetration for the next shot is concerned if an armour has been repaired. When a round penetrates, there is still a damage reduction applied, which uses similar inputs as the pen chance calculation, so the bullet penetration, the armour class, and the armour durability. This is very roughly a 20% reduction, and is the reason that 7N1 rounds on paper take down players to the thorax in one hit, but against level 4 armour and above, it doesn't actually happen in practice. When a bullet is stopped by armour, it does almost no damage to the player, and applies armour damage that depends on the round, and also the destructibility of the armour. This is probably the stat that confuses the discussion about armour the most, and is the reason why different materials that armour is made of actually makes a big difference to its performance. Destructibility is not visible in-game, but is a multiplier that causes armour to take more or less damage depending on its material. This effectively makes Aramid the best, and Glass the worst, and the numbers are quite different between the armour types, so it actually has a massive impact on performance, and in ways that you might not expect. These are a small number, because they are supposed to be how much less a round damages them, i.e. Aramid only takes 25% of base damage, but I think this is confusing when looking at it from an armor and durability perspective, because the durability numbers that we see in game are before this effect is applied, and to me it feels more intuitive to see how much the durability is improved by this stat instead, i.e. Aramid can take 4 times more damage than base. Let's take a look at a quick example as it'll hopefully make more sense. The level 2 armors show this well, and there are only 3. We have the module 3M, the Packer, and the 6B2. These have 40, 50, and 80 durability respectively, and you'd be forgiven in thinking that the 6B2 is the best. But when we take a look at the materials, the 6B2 is made of titanium, which has a durability multiplier of 1.8, which means that its effective durability is 145. 3M and Packer are both Aramid with a 4 times multiplier, which gives them an effective durability of 160 and 200, which actually means that the 6B2 is the worst. The higher the effective durability, the longer your armor will stay at close to full health, and in turn will protect you for longer. Material also has an effect on repairability, which determines how close to max durability it gets back to when you repair it. This is slightly different to the destructibility, and ultimately sets how many times the armor can be shot up and repaired multiple times before it's just junk and needs to be thrown away, as each time you repair, you remove some of the max durability. This is important because Tarkov uses the original maximum durability of the armor, rather than the current maximum to determine penetration. The broad rule of thumb that I use for lower durability armors is to only use them down to 50% of max HP. After that, they are pretty much garbage and don't protect you enough. Time for a fresh piece. Now, let's jump into some specific armors and have a think about when they are most appropriate to run. We covered level 2 already looking at effective durability, and determined that the packer is indeed the best. However, this is the best of the worst armor. There is no level 1 chest armor in Tarkov, and the packer is really only good for early wipe when everyone is having to run around with bad rounds because very few people have any trader levels whatsoever. 
Even 545T, which is available at Prapor level 1, has a decent chance of penetrating on the first shot, so the value of this armour is primarily against low grade pistol rounds, and most importantly shotguns, which is a SCAV fan favourite. If you're likely to bump into SCAVs, I do think it's worth wearing at least a packer, even if you're on a hard budget, because otherwise the new SCAV AI can easily catch you with a full thorax of pellets and it's game over when you're wearing nothing. Buy these from Ragman until you get to the flea market at level 10, or can find something better in raid. Before we move on to tier 3, for each armour class I'm going to state the penetration hurdle required to get to over 50% pen chance on the first shot as a reference. I used Veritas's Battle Buddy app for this, which is very good for checking out different armour and round combinations. For level 2 armour, it's about 17 pen. 5 seconds before we continue, please remember to subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. Alright, let's carry on. Armour at level 3 should be the mainstay of the early wipe, protecting against a broad category of lower tier ammo, with a cutoff at around 7.62 PS, so don't expect it to protect you from an AKM, an SKS, or anything with more punch than that. This is where the first armoured rig appears, which is a chest rig that doubles up as body armour, meaning you only need to equip one item to do both jobs. For the 16 ULA, you need Ragman level 2, and it's kind of expensive at 45k, and it's really expensive to repair when damaged because it's titanium. Don't get this one confused with the 15 ULA, which we'll visit in a minute, which is its level 4 cousin. People normally recommend the 6B23 rig, primarily because you can buy it from Ragman at level 2 for rubles, and it repairs very well, but I find that the Zuck 3 press is my favourite. It's usually pretty cheap to pick up on the flea market, and it has both really good destructibility, along with excellent repairability, because it's made of polymer. Technically, the Karasa is the best on overall durability, but given you're likely to get these back over and over again on insurance, and combined materials armors don't repair as well, I like the press more. To be honest, any of these will do, except the MF Untar, as it has a minus 18% speed debuff which is really high. If you're forced to use it, like for certain quests, if you combine it with a rig like the Tarzan, you can't see the awful blue anywhere near as much either. Once you have the flea market, I tend to just click on the overall armour category and scroll down until I find one that's going relatively cheaply, and keeping the max durabilities in mind, that's why I usually end up with the press. You should be looking to pay around 30 to 35k for a full health one, or 20k for one with max durability but needs a repair. For level 3, around 27 pen is the 50% threshold. Level 4 is the arena of the armoured rig, with a vast array to choose from. This is also the entry level PvP armour, and although it won't protect you against most late game rounds, it does start to help against lower geared players. PS for 762 is one of the big differences between level 3 and 4, as it pens level 3 often, but rarely against level 4 on the first shot. Level 4 even has an okay chance to stop one round of AP20 Slug, Subsonic for the MP7, and even SP5 for the VSS or VAL, although I wouldn't want to trust it to take more than one of those. Most of the rigs in the game are in this category, but there are a couple of other standalone armour pieces here too. The 6B13, which can be found fairly frequently on scavs, and is okay for a shot or two, but as it's made of ceramic, it repairs awfully and gets broken fast as well. I use these normally if I find them in good repair, but they will do at level 4. I don't see the 6B23 very often, but the same rules apply here as it's ceramic as well. The Highcom Trooper is the other standalone armour, and it is very good, being made of polymer like the press armour, so a great repair rate and a big boost to effective durability, putting it near the top of the list. This typically costs 80 to 90k on the flea, as they can be found on raiders, and they're probably the best piece of armour in class 4, unless you specifically value some of the storage layouts of the rigs that we'll discuss in a moment. The Trooper only protects the stomach, which is always an interesting discussion. Given the stomach is not a one-shot kill, it's very arguable that you're better off not protecting it and taking a CMS or a Serve 12 kit with you to repair it if it gets blacked, as when armour intercepts shots to the stomach normally, it reduces durability and exposes your thorax more, which is the body part that we need to protect given that we die when it hits zero. So in most cases, we'd rather just suck the damage up to the stomach and leave our armour at full durability, rather than preventing a hit to the stomach, but then getting killed with a shot to the chest afterwards. I feel that this was less clear cut back when there weren't items to remove black limbs, but now that you can crack out a bit of surgery to yourself on the field, chest only armour is likely the better choice if you have one and are bringing those items with you like the CMS. As a complete side note, I'm still amazed that they put those kits in the game. I still think that there should be some mechanic that forces you to leave if you get too damaged, whereas right now you can just carry on as if nothing happened, especially with the Serve 12 kit. On to the rigs, there are a bunch here. The budget choice is either the catchily named 6B3TM01M from Ragman Level 2, which you can just outright buy for the decent price of 46k, or the other Ulate, which there is a barter for soap and toilet paper if you can pick them up cheap from the flea market at the time. 
These are both low effective durability and repair quite badly, being made from titanium and ceramic, but are functional and give you a rig too. The two Anna Tactical M rigs are not bad and have middling durability and okay slot layouts, but they are expensive to repair as they're also titanium. I don't really use these unless I pick them off off players undamaged. The Wartech TV110 is a great middle ground as with armor steel it repairs very well and has a high base durability so the effective durability is alright despite the lower multiplier that armor steel gives. Ragman only sells them for rubles at level 4 though unfortunately, but you can pick them up for around 90k on the flea. The AVS and the ARS Armor A18 are a touch better on effective durability, but more expensive to repair as they're combined materials. To note, the AVS protects the stomach too, while the others don't. These are normally about 100,000. I don't use many of the good level 4 rigs personally, and tend to either go for standalone armor with a really cheap rig like the Bank Robber, or use one of the value combo rigs. In my experience, when I wear the TV-110, I effectively leave behind a really efficient storage mechanism for enemy players to take all of my kit in when I die, as it neatly fits both your helmet and headset into. Also, I typically don't value the space as much as other people seem to, but this is also likely to do with my playstyle, which isn't very looting heavy at all, and a preference to run light and efficient kits. Even if I'm fairly geared, I only tend to take two mags outside of the gun, one med kit, and painkillers plus three grenades in the pockets, with spare ammo and meds in the secure container. This doesn't really justify oodles of space in a rig to me. For level 4, the 50% pen threshold is about 37. Level 5 is the routine PvP territory for defending against other PMCs. They have a good chance of preventing a 7.62 BP penetrating, as well as a 7N1 for the Mosin or the SVD, and effectively stop the first hit or two from M855A1 for 556. In this category, the budget choice is the standalone armor Gazelle, which has the lowest effective HP again given that it's a ceramic material, but it will stop a decently powered round fairly often. I run this armor all the time, however the issue is that you have to complete the task Supervisor for Ragman before you can buy it for rubles at level 3 for 122k. However, there is a trade for 2 gold chains and 3 coffees, which is an option too, flea market willing. Now, this is really where the budget armor discussion ends. If you're gearing up to fight scavs, level 3 will do. If you're going to fight players, early wipe the level 4 value rigs will get you by, and after that the gazelle is really the first piece of armour that will stop you from dying instantly while still being pretty cost effective once you've unlocked the quest. The next bit is not about budget armour per se, but worth a discussion anyway on the remaining pieces that we have to choose from. You need to be really careful about the movement speed penalties that get applied to your PMC for the bigger armours. At tier 5 this is where you start to see penalties in excess of 20%, which makes some of the armours kind of unusable, and likewise with turn speed changing your sensitivity. Both of the higher versions of the Gen 4, i.e. the Assault Kit and the Full Kit, as well as the Fort Redoute T5, are like this. These are the three Tier 5 armors that give arms protection however, and do have high effective durabilities. Even the regular high mobility version gives minus 17% turn rate, although it's workable on move speed at minus 11%. Outside of those, the best armor here on effective durability is unsurprisingly the Killer, again because it's made of polymer and repairs super well followed by the Fort Redoute M and the High Mobility Gen 4. The two rigs at level 5 are both great, being the Tactec and the Ars Armor CPC, which are polymer and have very low debuffs. They can take a lot of punishment and are good for general PvP and mobility. For level 5, the bullet penetration threshold is about 50. In level 6, there are only three armors left. Don't use the Zabralo unless you want to be the guy with the Alton helmet on at the front of the squad, face checking people's shots. It can take an incredible amount of punishment, but the 42% speed debuff really prevents you from getting places, and in my opinion shouldn't be used solo. Of the other two, the Zuck 6A is good, but usually very expensive, and also ceramic, so very expensive to repair too. Finally, we have everyone's favourite, the Slick, which is armor steel, and only protects the stomach with very minimal stat debuffs for level 6 thorax protection, and is pretty much the best armor in the game. As of the time of recording, Slicks are going on the flea market for about 600,000, and you can see why. For level 6, the pen threshold is around 56, but there's a gap between M62 with 54 pen and the next round up which is 7BT1 with 59 pen. This means there are only 7 rounds which actually have a good chance of penetrating level 6 on the first shot, which are the two top 76251 rounds and the higher performing 54R rounds, along with 545 Igolnik. Once you get to the end game, you'll have probably worked out which ones you like the best, but in my experience it's hard to go wrong with the level 5 rigs for a general geared kit. So with that, please remember to sub and hit the bell if you want to see more. You can also follow me on Twitter, and I stream on Twitch on Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturday evenings UK time. So until then, I'll see you next time.
And as always, have fun in your raids.